Coming on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Morphine S500 Plus. On the channel, we've taken a look at a few Morphine mini PCs, but after some tweaking and tuning, this actually turned out to be the most powerful Ryzen 7000 series mini PC that I've tested over here on the channel when it comes to 1080p gaming and synthetic GPU benchmarks. And it really comes down to the RAM they opted to use in this system, along with what kind of TDP we can run this out without hitting thermal throttle or worrying about battery life in something like a handheld. Now I'm gonna dive into a lot of stuff here. We're gonna take a look at some benchmarks, test out some games. But before we get started, I do wanna mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office. But the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84. But if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate. And Windows is now activated. They'll email your code once your payment is processed. And that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. All right, back to the S500 Plus, and usually when it comes to these Ryzen 7000 series powered mini PCs, we've got user replaceable RAM. They will utilize SODIMM RAM, and a majority of them can only support up to 5600 megahertz. But with the new Morphine S500 Plus, they actually opted to use LP DDR5 RAM soldered to the board. So unfortunately, the highest amount you can get at the time of making this video is 16 gigs, but out of the box, it's running at 6400 megatransfers per second. And I will let you in on a little secret. You can actually overclock the RAM from the BIOS. Now this is not recommended from the manufacturer, but that's exactly what we're gonna be doing in this video, bringing it up to 7,500 megatransfers per second. Initially, I was unaware that this was utilizing LP DDR5 RAM. And again, once I pulled it apart, I noticed we didn't have any sticks of RAM in here. So the RAM is actually under the CPU cooler here. So in conjunction with that much faster RAM and the fact that we can run this up to 75 watts continuously without having to worry about battery life makes this a really powerful mini gaming PC. We've also got enough room in here for two M.2 NVMe SSDs. So we've got two slots. And when it comes to the overall IO layout, up front, we've got a USB 4 port running at a 40 gig protocol. This will support up to 8K 60 out. Plus, we've got two full-size USB 3.2 ports and our power button. On each side, not much going on, but we do have some ventilation. And like I mentioned, we can actually take this up to 75 watts, which is really going to unlock that performance. And you definitely want enough air flowing through this unit. And around back, we've got two full-size USB 2.0 ports, two more full-size USB 3.2 ports, full-size HDMI 2.1, full-size DisplayPort 1.4, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and dual Ethernet. Now, only one of these is a 2.5 gigabit LAN port, but I mean, that's more than enough for a mini PC like this. Plus, we've got Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2 built in. Morphine is offering this with a couple different CPU variants. You can actually opt for the 7840U and the 6810U, which is one I personally haven't seen yet, but RAM stays the same across the board. 16 gigs of LP DDR5 at 6400 megatransfers per second. But with this unit here, we've got the Ryzen 7 7840HS. This is their highest end model over on their website. And with this, we get eight Zen 4 cores, 16 threads, a base clock of 3.8 and a boost up to 5.1. We've also got the built-in AMD Radeon 780M iGPU, which is based on RDNA 3 with 12 compute units, and it runs it up to 2700 megahertz in the 7840HS. Again, we're limited to 16 gigabytes of LP DDR5. I really do wish they would have offered a 32 gigabyte variant of this, but it is running in dual channel. We can add two M.2 NVMe SSDs, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and this comes out of the box with Windows 11. So the reason I was able to get the S500 Plus to perform like it does is because we do have that LP DDR5 RAM. It's already running at 6400 megahertz or 6400 megatransfers per second, as you can see. We've also got that Ryzen 7 7840HS, but this BIOS is unlocked. So basically what I did here was go to AMD CVS, UMC Common Options, 
LP DDR options, timing, it's gonna give you a warning. Now I do wanna say the manufacturer does not recommend doing this, but I did it and it does work on this PC. Your mileage may vary. I've set the active memory timing settings to enable maximum memory data clock speed. Now this is where we can actually get some real good performance out of this. So I've taken this up to 7,500 mega transfers per second. And of course we've seen handhelds on the market with this speed, but none of those handhelds were able to sustain up to about 75 Watts. So that's exactly how I have this set up. You could use a third party application inside of windows to up it, or you could come right back into CVS, SMU common options, and change the SPL control or even the uh, smart shift control. Personally, I was just using x86 tuning utility inside of Windows. And uh, now I wanna show you what this thing can do. The first thing I did was run some benchmarks on this unit. And we're strictly looking at that iGPU performance here. 3D Mark Night Raid, 31,349. On most other mini PCs with the same chip and slower RAM, we're around 28,000. Fire Strike, 8,551. 78 to 79 with slower RAM. And finally, Time Spy, where we see one of the biggest boosts in performance, 3,758. The highest score I've ever been able to get out of a mobile chip with the 780M iGPU was 3,349. And that was on the 7940HS at about 90 watts. We were running much slower RAM than that, 5,600 mega transfers per second. And all of the other mini PCs that I've tested, we just couldn't do any overclocking to that RAM. So these synthetic benchmarks are looking really good, but now it's time to test out some real world gaming and see exactly what we can do here. First up, we've got Ratchet and Clank ripped apart, 1080p, low, FSR set to balance. Now we're still not working with a 4K machine here, we're still on an iGPU, but 1080p gaming with a little bit of the resolution scale is definitely possible on this system. We're well over 60, in fact, we got an average of 67 FPS with this game. Next up, we've got Mortal Kombat 1, 1080p, low, with FSR set to balance. Now, we've got a little bit of fluctuation in that frame rate up top, and, you know, even at lower wattages with slower RAM, I've been able to get this to run a bit better, just kind of stuck there at 60. Either way, if I didn't have that FPS counter on screen right now, I wouldn't even notice that it was dropping by one or two frames. Borderlands 3, 1080p, low, medium, mix. So this was a little odd. Uh, when I first went into this, I was actually at low settings and it was right there under 60 FPS. Messed around with it for just a little bit, rebooted the game, back in it at low, medium, and now we're getting an average of 72. Forza Motorsports, you ever tried this on your PC, you know how unoptimized it is. We're at 1080p with auto medium set, so it kind of dynamically scales everything for us. FSR is set to performance, and we're right there on the edge of running this at a constant 60. Power World is one I've been trying to get to run on this little iGPU at 1080p with a constant 60, but you might need to go ahead and drop this down to 900p until they add official support for FSR. If we could set that to balance right now, no problem at all at 1080p low, but as you can see, we do dip under with it set up like this. And the final game I wanted to test here was Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p, low, FSR, set to performance. This is how I test it on these iGPUs all the time. Basically, the highest frame rate or highest average frame rate I've ever got out of the 780M was 78 FPS. We're actually getting an average of around 85 FPS, so we've got a nice little bump there, and it really comes down to having that higher wattage and faster RAM. She's armed, hear me? 
So obviously with that much faster RAM here and the fact that we can go up so high with the wattage with not having to really worry about thermals or battery life, we're seeing some absolutely amazing performance out of this chipset. Now, unfortunately, not every mini PC is going to do this. Most of them right now only support SODIMM RAM up to 5,600 mega transfers per second. But you know, once we pair faster RAM with this iGPU, it can really up that performance. But that's going to wrap it up for my first look video at the S500 Plus. If you're interested in checking out Steam Deck OS running on this, let me know down below. And if you want to learn a little more about this rig, I'll leave links in the description. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.